Beloved brothers and sisters, I say happy Easter and welcome to the resurrection morning, the remembrance of the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which God wrought for us for the salvation of our souls. Right away, we're going to uh, go through this meeting this way. We're going to Take Bible reading right now, Matthew chapter 28. I will ask Joy to read Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 20, the entire verses. After that reading, we will take discussion. And this is the discussion we're discussing. Express your own key messages and lessons of Easter. Express your key messages and lessons of Easter. Which scriptures? stand out for you. Um, the Easter messages you can find in Matthew chapter 26 all the way to Matthew chapter 28, the three last uh, verses of Matthew. And of course, in all the synoptic gospels, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is also um, recorded. Okay, so this is what we'll do. After that, we will summarize I will summarize and then we will pray. Our theme for this month was carefully uh, chosen as the Spirit of God led us. It is the new creation. And as I've always said from the beginning that Easter is indeed what gives us that new creation. And so we'll bring the two together in the summary and we will pray. So at this point, Joy, Sister Joy, please, can you read Matthew chapter 28 for us, the entire 20 verses from verse 1 to 20. Open your line and read. Let's take our Bible reading. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as Amen. he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Hallelujah. You see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the, sol the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been wide, widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and Amen. teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. He's alive. He is alive. He is alive. Jesus is alive in me. Jesus is alive in you. That's the essence of Easter. 
to remind us again that he is alive. He is not in the grave. No, no. He's alive. He's alive. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty. He has all power, all authority, all dominion over all creations of God. He's alive. He reigns. He reigns. Please, just go ahead and worship him. I think we should just worship God and his son, Jesus Christ. Just worship Jesus. Tell him you are alive, Jesus. You are alive. Let's worship God. Let's worship Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. He is alive. He is alive. He's alive forever. He's alive in me. He's alive in your life. He's alive. The power that raised him from the dead is in us. He's in me. He's in you. He's with us. Thank you, Almighty God. You be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. As you worship God, that same resurrection power will manifest in your own life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we want to take the discussion now. What is your own Easter messages and lessons? Let's share. Keep it sharp any scripture you want to mention mention it quickly and feel free to read it okay let's go open the line and please share your own easter discussion what are your own easter key messages and lessons what are your own easter key messages and lessons express your own key messages and lessons of easter my darling wife, please go ahead. Glory. Good morning, brother, yeah. brothers and sisters. Okay, happy Easter to everyone again. I just want to... Happy bring Easter to you. Thank you. I just want to, to draw our attention to Matthew 28, verse 2. We'll see there that the angel of the Lord, I'm just paraphrasing it, it the angel, after the earthquake and all of that occurred, the angel rolled back the stone for... Mary and the other women that were with her to see the tomb. The way I've grown with this message, the Easter story and all of that is that when the angel rolled the stone, Jesus came forth. But looking at it closely, we'll see that the angel rolled back the stone just for the women to see that Jesus wasn't there in the grave. That's Amen. been so powerful since I discovered this for me and it shows the power of God. God didn't need an angel to roll that stone back for Jesus to come out. The power of God, which is the Holy Spirit, that same spirit that Romans chapter 8 talks about in verse 11, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave is able to quicken our mortal bodies. So I just want us to remember always, no matter what we go through, this lesson of Easter, the story of Easter, shows us how powerful our God is. That what Jesus did on the cross has settled everything, no matter what we go go through big or small the power of god is able to do it for us at the right time thank you thank you very much oh easter is the demonstration of god's power and that power is available to us and work it for us and in us glory be to god beautiful message sister comfort my brethren in Christ Thank Jesus, <laughs> happy, I will not say Easter, happy resurrection, happy uh, crucifixion, happy Jesus Christ who have been resurrected for us. Amen. Um, my story, I, 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 in fact, the, I, my meditation had been on all these statements, Jesus said, believe, believe. But the scripture I, that I read and I, I focus on is the statement of Centurion at um, chapter 27 of that Matthew verse 20, 54. And I will say why I focus on that. Because this, when the Centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Oh, God. So mm. why was Jesus crucified? Because he said he is the son of God. 
Mm -hmm. well, who, why is, what is it important for us to know that Jesus is the son of God? John 3, 16, which we all know is what the answer, 16, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. 18. And with that is my power that Jesus said, for God so loved, or the scripture said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So my message is Jesus is the son of God. Amen. God gave him so that I will have everlasting life. Amen. I believe God has resurrected him. I, because of his love, I focus now on this power, like my sister said, the power of God in Jesus Christ. I, I the love of God. So I have nothing to worry about. Christ mm -hmm. has done it for me mm -hmm. and will continue to do it for me. So let us rejoice in the resurrected Christ who is able that. to do everything and believe in him that he will do it for us. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Thank you. Very clear message as well. Yes, the love of God that has made God to give us his son, Jesus Christ, and through whom we have eternal life, everlasting life. And that same power is available to do everything for us and lead us to that eternal uh, everlasting life in God. Glory be to God. Thank you, beloved sister. Who else wants to share your Easter? What are you, your Easter lessons? Easter key messages. What would you like to share? Yes, Sister Comfort, your line is on again. Maybe. I think um, yes. Scripture that my sister Joy read, the concluding one, is what I will also take home. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, always. to the very end of the age. So the resurrected Jesus Christ has received all the authority, all the power from God. If I believe in him, obeyed him, baptizing in the Holy Spirit, and acknowledging him and obeying him, he will be with me. He will be with all of us. He Amen. is with us. Amen. You the end. Hallelujah. The Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so, it's so wonderful. Thank you, uh, beloved sister. I think uh, you have all said it. This is what it is. <laughs> there is really no, you know, big thing. But it is this joy, is this understanding, is this is this celebration, is this uh, um, communion, fellowship, you know, with one another, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that helps us in the presence of the Holy Spirit that helps us to honor the Father and the Son. That's what it is. This is a remembrance. Let's not forget, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive in me. He's alive in you. He's alive in every one of us that believes 
in him who has come to him. Hallelujah. I want to summarize my what I, I call key messages of Easter in two broad headings. The heading one is victory. Heading one is victory. Hallelujah. And then heading two is new life. Victory and new life. And they come together. Glory be to God. That will be, for me, the summary of the story of this season, this season of remembrance of the death, the resurrection, and as I always say, at the ascension to make it complete of Jesus Christ, even though it took some days of him showing himself to the disciples before he ascended to heaven, but it all comes together. So, key message for me, and which I want to share with us, bringing together all that our sisters have shared with us today, is victory. God's victory through his son, Jesus Christ, for humankind and the new, the new life that he has given to humankind. But the choice is yours, the choice is mine to come into this victory and new life through his son, Jesus Christ. And I want to look at this victory in uh, six key points that come together, victory and new life. So number one victory is victory over Satan. Victory over Satan. Many people want to shy away from Satan. Some even tells you don't believe, or some even tell you rather. Some tell you don't believe there is anything Satan. You do that to your own peril. Because the whole problem of the earth that you see today is caused by Satan. You must come to this reality of the world and the hopelessness of the world because Satan is in the world and it is the source and the cause of all evil. So when we are talking about redemption, what are we being redeemed from? Oh, when we talk about God saves us, what is God saving us from? We talk about sin. Oh, who is the author of sin? So number one, victory is victory over Satan. You know, when you read Matthew chapter four, the temptation of Jesus, sometimes people make the mistake and use it and say, oh, Jesus had victory over Satan. No, he didn't have victory over Satan there. He had victory over the temptation of Satan. <laughs> Even the Bible there says Satan left him for a season, for a while. He was waiting for him. It was here at his crucifixion. In case you don't follow it with me, you don't realize that Satan is the author of all evil. Satan was the author of the death of Jesus, the killing of Jesus was authored by Satan. The Bible says in John chapter 13, verse 27, you can look at it for me. John's own record of the event of the death and resurrection of Jesus started in John chapter 13. If you go there, John chapter 13, verse 27, please look it up for me and read. And then you also go to Luke chapter 22, verses two through five. Okay, let me go to Luke. While somebody else picks John for me. Luke 22, 2 to 5. Luke 22, I read from verse 2. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Three, then Satan entered Judas, so named Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. Four. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him 
to them. Five, and they were glad and agreed to give him money. We are in this continuous battle. Those schemes that people scheme against you and you get very angry, very worked up with them, often it is a scheme of the devil. The devil schemes against us in all ways, but thanks be to God. Jesus, through Jesus, we have victory. Jesus has taken and obtained victory over Satan and all the evil works of the devil. Yes, please, it's the comfort. Go ahead and read John 13, uh, 27. It says, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. Do it quickly. Yes, thank you very much. God bless you. So you've seen there, Satan instigated the high priests and instigated Judas, and they got together and schemed to kill Jesus. And as you've read the story, even when Pilate said, I have found nothing wrong with him. And there is a provision that I can free anybody I choose to free. Can I free Jesus? They said, no. They said, what then do I do with him? I found nothing wrong. He has done nothing wrong. They said, crucify him. The devil was speaking. <laughs> oh, but he did not know that that was his undoing. Whatever scheme the enemy is performing in your life, just call on Jesus. Don't cry to the devil. Just call on Jesus, cry to Jesus, the one who has defeated the devil. In the name of Jesus, every work and power of the devil shall be defeated in your life, has been defeated in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. So Satan is the source of sin and death. And so number two victory, therefore, is victory over grief and death, victory over grief and death. As you would see there in Matthew chapter 28 from two to six, which is the place uh, um, our sisters who discussed mentioned, victory over grief and death. Jesus came out of the grave and the stone was still there. In verse 2, he said, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And when the stone was rolled, Jesus was not there. Hallelujah. By the power of God, Jesus had victory over the grave that held Grave could not hold him bound. Death could not hold him bound. So by victory over Satan, Satan brought sin. We also through Jesus Christ have victory over Satan and victory over sin. By victory over death, sin brings death. We have victory over sin, over grave, and over death through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just remind us of that, if we've, in case we may have forgotten, Romans chapter five. The Bible makes it very clear that sin came into the world and through sin, death reigned. Or well, let's start from verse 12, verse 12 rather. Just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus, death spread to all men because all sinned. I jump to 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many die, much more, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Hallelujah. 
through him and the victory he has obtained, he has conquered the grave, he has conquered death, he has conquered Satan, he has therefore conquered sin and death and all evil for us. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Number three, victory is victory over men, man and the traditions of men. Victory over men as humankind and their traditions. Instead, he has established the will of God, the will of God. You see this all through because the high priests, Pilate, all oh, the Pharisees, they teamed up. This was their plan. They thought they could kill him, get rid of him, as they will always want to do to us for standing up for righteousness. But they didn't know that by what they were doing, they were only fulfilling the plan and the will of God. Glory be to God. And also at Gethsemane, which you will see in 26, chapter 26 from 36 to 45, there Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. So victory, Jesus had victory over men, humankind, and their traditions. Another scripture that shows us this is also in chapter 27, in verse 51, chapter 27, verse 51. It says, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. And we know that this veil of the temple was the barrier that men could not have access to God. They had to only go through the human priests. But this tradition of men were or was broken, destroyed. Jesus had victory over it. By the power of God, that veil that covered the Holy of Holies, that didn't allow man to enter to the presence of God, was torn by the power of God from top to bottom. All glory be to God. And now we have access, just as we have sung. We have victory. We have access to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory over men and the traditions of men. Rather, he has established the will of God to reign in your life and in my life forever and ever. In Jesus' name. In 28.18 as well, you see that same point being emphasized because he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He has all authority. He has all power. Glory be to God. Number four is victory over fear. Victory over fear. If you look at that chapter 28, you will see at different times. The first time angel said to uh, Mary, fear not. When Jesus appeared also to her, in, to them in verse 10, he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I have overcome. I have overcome. Fear not. So victory over fear. What are you afraid of? What are we worried about? Are we worried about Satan? Are we worried about sin? Are we worried about death? Are we worried about grave? Are we worried about men and their traditions? Jesus said, fear not, I have victory over all of them. So Jesus has taken victory over fear and has given us victory over fear. Number five is victory over nature. Victory over nature. Victory over nature. And I will describe this here as time and space. So Jesus, by his resurrection, is no longer limited to time and space. That makes him the unique being. Jesus can appear to you if he so chooses. He does not need any human body, like demons that are possessing human bodies. 
to walk through them. Jesus has the ability, the right, the authority, the power to appear in this world if he so chooses and to, 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 to operate in heaven and on earth. He is the unique one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So he has victory over nature. And this you will see in various scriptures. After his resurrection, he appeared to his disciples. Even when the house was shut. Let's look at John chapter 20, verses 26 to 30. So that you know that you don't have to fear anything. Just like our sister said, Jesus is always with you. Just as he promised, he said, no, I am with you always. John chapter 20, let's look at it. From verse 26, I said to 30. Let's read it together. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and foremost with them, Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Do you see the resurrected Jesus still has the mark? He still has the mark. Glory be to God. We'll come back to that point. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are you, brothers and sisters, even when you don't see him with your naked eyes, even when he doesn't appear physically to you, you know he is with you because he's faithful and true. And he has said, no, I am with you always even to the end of the earth. If it becomes necessary for him to appear to you, if it becomes necessary for him to show up in your matter, he will show up. But he doesn't need to appear. Oh, you remember Peter in prison, angels, he sent his angels. Oh, with the, the mere appearance of the angels, chains fell off on their own, chains fell off, doors opened by their own, on their, in their own accord. Glory be to God. We serve a God that is all-powerful, omnipotent God. And Jesus has received this omnipotent of the Father. For the Father has given him all power, all authority in heaven and on earth. Glory be to God. 30 and the last. And truly, Jesus did many other. Okay, we'll just stop there. Back to 28. So oh, that was victory over nature. So don't worry yourself. When it looks like nothing is happening, know that Jesus is there with you. Number six, which is the last point I will make today, is victory and freedom for new life. Victory and freedom for new life. So Jesus has obtained all this victory for us and the freedom for us to enjoy new life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. By his resurrection power, God, through his son Jesus Christ, has given us this new life. So I just want to make this emphatic point. That as Christ rose from dead, transformed into glory, so also, by the Spirit of God, we also, who believe in him, are renewed, recreated, changed, and transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God. Hallelujah. I want to take that again. Victory and freedom for new life by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. That as Christ rose from dead, transformed into glory, that's by his ascension, right? So also, by the Spirit of God, we who believe in him are recreated, renewed, 
changed and transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 emphasizes this point. Read it with me before we pray. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. For whom he foreknew, for whom who foreknew, God foreknew. What has God done? He also predestined to be conformed, to be transformed to the image of his son. Who is his son? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we have been renewed, recreated, transformed into the image of his son, the son of God. That he, the son of God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, might be the firstborn. Among many brethren, we are his brothers and sisters, born by the Spirit of God, renewed, recreated after his own image. Therefore are we new creation. We are the new creation of God. God has recreated us, brothers and sisters, as Jesus was raised from the dead, Romans chapter 6, 4 to 6, say, so have we been raised with him if we believe in him. Glory be to God. You are a new creature. You are a new creation created in the image of the son of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. As you have heard this word, Victory is for you. God has obtained has victory unto himself. Jesus has obtained victory to you, uh, for you and for me. We have victory that we may live according to the will of God and glorify God. Let us pray. Open your mouth now and tell him and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the victory you have given me through your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the victory that you have obtained for me, victory over Satan, victory over sin, victory over death, victory over grave, victory over man and traditions of men, victory over all powers, victory over nature, victory over fear, whatever my fears are, victory over them all, victory over nature, and victory for me to enjoy new life, freedom, to serve you and to do your will. Father, today I celebrate you, I thank you, and I ask, Lord, let all these victories manifest in my life and that I may live and do your will by your resurrection power, the power that raised my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the dead, that I may live by the power of your Holy Spirit and live in the new life, this new life you have given me. Father, make all things, almighty God, in the name of Jesus, make all things new, make all things new in my life. As your new creation, new creature, Lord, make all things new. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself and whatever ugly situation is in your life, hand it over to God now because you have victory over that matter, over that situation, and declare and pronounce your victory in your family. Pronounce and declare your victory. And tell that devil that you have victory over that devil and you're serving God. You are serving God. You are fulfilling the will and the purpose of God for your life. We are fulfilling the will and the purpose of God for our lives. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And let's bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Join me and let's pray because by this victory, over humanity, Jesus rules and reigns over all. We want to pray that the will of God be done. There are all manner of schemes that men are scheming all over the world. In your own environment, God has given you victory. So take authority and declare that victory now. In the name of Jesus, the kingdom of God must reign. The will of God must be done in your life, in your family, in your neighborhood, in your nation. Let's pray. 
Father God, we pray by the victory that you have given to us and indeed humanity that your will, your kingdom be done, that the power of Satan and the scheme of men should not stand. Father, we agree right now in the name of Jesus that every evil scheme of men in our lives, in our families, in our neighborhood, in our nations, and all over the world come to nothing now. In the name of Jesus, and we agree and ask, oh God, let your will be done. Today, let your will be done. In all nations of the earth, let your will be done. Let your kingdom be established. Thank you, our Father and our God. To you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray that the victory that Jesus has obtained for you Victory over all evil, for Satan brought sin, and sin brought sickness and disease and death. And Jesus, by his death and resurrection, has brought us victory over Satan and all the evil that came through Satan. May I pray for you that whatever affliction of the enemy is in your life, I pray for myself, I pray for every one of us, my household your household, our families, that affliction be terminated right now by the victory of Jesus that the Almighty God has given unto us. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Almighty God, pour your spirit upon us afresh. Oh, give us the strength by your spirit to walk in this new life and to glorify you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.